Praise the Lord, everybody. 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 Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. We're going to start worship off with a little praise song this morning. And I want everybody to be a part of this choir. The words are simple and it's call and response. So when I say it, you just simply say it after me. Can we do that together? Come on, put your hands together right here. Put your hands down. Come on, come on, come on, Zion. Yeah, yeah. Here we go right here. Lift it. Come on. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above. above every Come on, let's lift it again. Yes, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above. above every Come on, with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Come on. How many of y'all believe that? With power and majesty. Come on, lift it. Dominion of hey, right. Come on, lift that thing. Oh, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every day. Yeah, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above, above every name. With power and majesty. Authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Anybody know with power and majesty? Yes, God. Dominion authority. Hey, Come on, let's take it higher. Oh, my God, Ray. Our God, Ray. Lord, you reign above. Yeah, my God, Ray. Our God reigns. Hallelujah, Lord, you reign above. Let's do it again with power and majesty. Dominion authority. Hey, you reign. Somebody came in here heavy this morning. You need to get lighter with power. Dominion authority. Hallelujah, you reign. One more time. Take it higher. I love it. Come on. Say, my God reigns. I got rid Lord, you above, above everything. Yeah, I got rid I got rid Hallelujah. Lord, you reign. Let's change the words over my circumstance. Giving me another chance. Hey, you reign. Anybody know he's greater than your problems? Yeah, over. Giving me another chance. You reign. You ought to lift it again. Say it until you believe it. Over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you reign. Come on, we're going to hold this out right here. Over my service. Giving me another chance. I love 
someone in the hospital, Miss Garden. When you got a sick brother, you don't know what's going on. You ought to declare, he reigns. Hey, he reigns. Anybody know that God reigns? We got members in the hospital this morning. Y'all don't even know that Eric is in the hospital and Dallary is in the hospital. But if you believe it, shout, he reigns. God, whatever you're going to do, we know that you reign. You still reign. Somebody came and they just had an argument in their house before they got to church and their attitude is jacked up. Give it to God and say, you reign. My spouse gets on my nerves sometimes, but you reign. You still reign. And can I tell you that somebody came discouraged this morning? And you need to encourage your heart and remind yourself that he reigns over every problem. He reigns over every moment of your life. He reigns over every decision. He reigns over every setback. He reigns over every diagnosis. He reigns over PTSD. He reigns over HIV. He reigns over cancer. He reigns over your tears. He reigns. Come on, let's pray to our God who sits high on the throne and reigns forever and ever. No election season can dethrone him. Nobody can veto him. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And he eternally reigns on the throne. God, we give you glory. That we lift up our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. God, we declare that all our help comes from you. That's why we're here today. Because we need your help. We're not here because everything is good. We're here because you're good. And we need your help. So, Father, as we endeavor to lift up your name to make you large in this place, as it's our desire to give you the glory, help us to lay aside any weight that might distract us. For every problem that's awaiting us outside of these walls, God, we press pause on it for a moment and we give you the focus of our attention, the worship of our praise. We give you the lifting of our voices and the clapping of our hands. We give you our hearts, oh God, so that you might etch your word on it on today. Hear our prayer, oh God. Climb your ear to us and grant us your peace because you reign. Hey, God. We don't come today afraid of anything because we know that you're able to do it. Oh God, we know that you have the power to do all things. We just come bowing before you, asking that you will, that you will make a way, that you will bless, keep, and cover, that you will restore, and that you will restrain down your Shekinah glory in this place. In Jesus' name, the name of the one who reigns, we pray. And the people of God said together all over the building, hallelujah and amen. He reigns. Jesus reigns. We come to give him the glory. Put your hands together and bless God as this choir comes with another selection.
Come on, can you praise the Lord with us this morning? I know it don't really feel like church, but it feels good. Come on, stand up and clap your hands with us. Woo! Come on, praise team. Come on and say, we worship you. We worship you. All glory is yours. All glory is yours. You are the Lord. Lord over all, we worship you, all glory is yours, you are the Lord, Lord over all, we worship you, all glory is yours, you are the Lord, Lord over all, we worship you, all glory is yours, you are the Lord, Lord over all. We worship you, all glory is yours, you are the Lord, Lord over all. We worship you, all glory is yours, you are the Lord, Lord over all. Come on, say, Lord over all, Lord over all, Lord over all, Lord over all, Lord over all. Lord over all, Lord over all, with every breath, with every breath that I breathe. Come on, how many people came to praise me? I will praise you. Woo. With every song, with every song that I sing, I will praise you. I will praise you. Come on, say, you are my God and my King. You are my God and my King. There's no one greater. For you are Lord of all. It feels kind of good, don't it? Can we sing a little bit more? Come on, with every breath. Come on, say it with us. With every breath that I breathe. With every breath that I breathe. I will praise you. Hey, with every song that I sing. Come on, I will pray. Come on, testify and say, You are my God and my King. Come on, tell them, say, There's no one greater. For you are Lord. Of all. Yes, you are. Come on, put your hands together if he is Lord of all. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap if he's your Lord of all. The song said, with every breath that I breathe, I will praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. To God be the glory for the great things he has done and that he is doing in our lives and in our church life. Amen. Amen. I'm here to give you your announcements this morning. Good morning, Greater Joy, friends and family. This is Deacon Antonio Haynes with your morning announcements. On behalf of the Greater Joy family and our pastor, Reverend Shamar Haynes, we want to welcome those joining us in person as well as those joining us virtually. As we go throughout the service, we pray that the people, the worship, and the word allow you to see God in this place and the joy in our hearts. Amen. Amen. We want to remind you that Greater Joy is operating in our hybrid services. First and third Sundays are in person. Second, fourth, and fifth Sundays are virtual. And as of March tw- March 19th, we plan to go back in full uh, in-person services. So we will still do hybrid, but we want to bring everything in every Sunday um, uh, in the building. So March 19th, mark your calendars. We will return to full in-person. That's in-person, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth Sundays. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't sound like y'all excited about that. (laughs) Amen. We want to remind you of the weekly events within Greater Joy Community Church. On Monday, there are no events. Monday is MLK holiday. Tuesday, we have our I Believe prayer call at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Wednesday, we have Bible study. And Thursday, we have choir rehearsal here at Hannah. Upcoming events. Greater Joy has a lot that's going to be transpiring in the next few months. Um, To start off, on Sunday, January 29th, which is our fifth Sundays, 
we have an event called Be the Church, which will happen every fifth Sunday. We will be the church. This means the Friday before the fifth Sunday, Pastor Haynes would do a virtual service called Word and Worship on that Friday night. That Saturday and that Sunday, we will be the church, which means we will be out in the community. So this coming Saturday, January 28th, we will be volunteering at the Chesterfield County Food Bank. The satellite location is Chocolate Elementary. We have 10 slots for Greater Joy. If you want to volunteer, please reach out to me so I can put your name in that slot. Those slots will fill up fast, so let me know as soon as possible if you want to volunteer with us on that Saturday, January 28th. It is from 9 to 11 a.m., only two hours. That Sunday, the 29th, we will be at Commonwealth Living Facility, which is right back here. We will hold a small service with the seniors at Commonwealth Living Facility. That's going to be at our normal time, 11 o'clock. Amen. Let me clear up a couple of things. Yes. So not this weekend. This weekend is fourth Sunday. We'll be in virtual worship. But on the fifth Sunday, um, we will be in the be the church mode. And that, like Deacon Antonio Haynes said, that will be where we will be in the community. Again, on Saturday, the 28th, we're at Chalkley Elementary School from 9 to 11 with the Chesterfield Food Bank. We will be handing out uh, food as uh, the cars come in um, to be served. On Sunday, tentatively on that Sunday, we'll be at the senior, Commonwealth Senior Living, and we have worshiped with them many times before pre-pandemic. Um, the director has approved us to come, but she is waiting for her manager or her director to give the final approval. Other than that, it looks like it's a go. We will know for certain this week and begin to tell you um, in our weekly communications as well as remind you next Sunday. Right now, we have 10 spots available for Saturday. There are more open. We only took 10 to say we can pledge. We're certain that we can get 10 of us there. If more want to do it, Please give us your information, your names. You can contact Deacon Antonio Haynes. You can contact Caroline Johnson, and you can also contact Jabari Scott. Okay, they will be helping us to manage who's coming, and we will get more spaces. The more, the merrier, the more, the better. But we started out with 10, amen. So we're excited about some changes this year, and we will be communicating them to you as they come along so that you will not um, be confused about what's happening next in the life of greater joy, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Haynes. So that is Be the Church. Amen. Um, looking forward to February. February is Black History Month, so we're looking forward to the Black History profiles from our youth and our adults that are done through the entire month of February. Also, Sunday, February 19th, is GJCC Soul Food Sunday. Amen. Can somebody say Soul Food Sunday? That excites me because I get to eat. Amen. That means that is the Sunday where people bring in their favorite soul food dishes and we get to fellowship after service. So there will be more from, um, I'm pretty sure, the church and the hospitality ministry about what is coming forth and if anything is needed. So please stay tuned for that. More information will come. And February 22nd is Ash Wednesday. And GJCC will have an Ash Wednesday service in person here at 7 p.m. on that Wednesday evening. So as I said, there, is a, there are a lot of changes and a lot of things that are going on. Greater Joy will be busy um, for the next 2020 year, 2023 year, excuse me. Yeah, 2020 years, amen. Um, we want to ask that you keep our family and friends on the prayer list in prayer. We have this morning, Sister Dallary Briley, Fernando Galliard, Eddie Garris, Jeffrey and Shonda Hawkins, Deacon George Hembrick, Brother Eric Jones, Clarence Mitchell, Ladarius Noel, Ronnie Patterson, Roy Reed Sr., Priscilla Robinson, and Tamara Thompson. And if you have anyone you want to add to the prayer list or request for prayer, please do so by reaching out to the church at 804-601-8569, or you can email greaterjoyrba at gmail.com. I believe that is all for me. Thank you so much for your time and attention, Greater Joy. We will now turn the service over to Reverend Sharon Battle for our morning devotions. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As a family, we have a tendency to send out good morning um, 
uh, greetings to every one of us to make sure that we are all all right and in fellowship with God first thing in the morning. But it sure feels good to say good morning to all of you. You certainly look good. I missed you. I'm, I'm glad that I can reach out, touch, and see you, even if it's just with my eyes or a fist bump or something like that. But I sure thank the Lord for you. Turn with me, if you will. Um, I'm reading from the ESV version, Psalms 32, verse 8 through verse 11. I see some people still working with their mobile devices. I left mine in the car. My granddaughter so graciously gave me hers. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's good to have community when somebody got your back after you mess up, right? Good to have community. Okay, verse eight. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curved with a bit and a bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Amen. Now, if you'll turn with me to Romans, um, Romans chapter 8. These children, they're so tacky. Thank you, God, for help. Thank you. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through, let's say 1 through 5. Okay. Everybody with me? Amen. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit has set you free in Christ Jesus. Excuse me. In Christ Jesus. From the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by flesh could not do by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, their minds are on the things of the flesh, but those that live according to the spirit set their minds on things above amen amen thank you thank you lord thank you lord for allowing me to read that little bitty print i appreciate you god let's bow our hands heavenly father we thank you lord god the god that has brought us over the years lord god kept us all the way through the pandemic lord god into 2022 and Lord showed up yet once again to say, all things are afresh and all things are anew. In 2023, Lord God, we pray that you set us free, Lord. Move the shackles off our feet, Lord God. Set us free from anything that might keep us bound, Lord God. We pray, God, for a fresh anointing, not just upon this uh, branch of Zion, not just upon us, Lord God, but over the earth, set us free, Lord God. There's so much stuff that's on the news, Lord God. There's so much stuff in the world, Lord God. Anytime a six-year-old God has the presence of mind to pick up a gun and shoot somebody, Lord God, we need you, and we need you right now, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you speak to word, a word of comfort to people who are struggling, struggling from grief and from death and from uh, disease and from depression, Lord God. There's some people, Lord God, out here that you might have made a decision on that you needed them more in heaven than on earth, Lord God. That some people are angry about that situation. God, we ask that you even roll the stone away in front of that heart, Lord God, that they will come back to you. 
God, we ask for a great return of your people. Great return to the church, Lord God. Great return to even the places of worship that we might build each other up, Lord God. Teach us, oh God, to stop speaking negativity in our own lives, Lord God. If the world was created with the words that you spoke, Lord God, and at the adoption of us being into the body of Christ, Lord God, then our words have power. Teach us to speak life to speak positivity, to speak um, kind words into other people's lives, Lord God. And when we decide or not even decide, go back to the old man just at a oops, Lord God. Give us correction. Lord God, I've had situations that made me angry and I went to speak and you just shut my mouth. God, shut my mouth so that I won't sin against you. But bless your people, Lord God. Keep us busy, Lord God. I'm excited about the work of your hand, Lord God. Let us be your hands and your feet in the community, Lord God, out here, Lord God, and, and talking to people about your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and your truth that came embodied in Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I just couldn't take life anymore. Problems had me bound. Depression weighed me down. The world held me close. So I wouldn't let go. God's mercy. So I wouldn't let go. Almost made up. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough and couldn't see it.
Perhaps that song doesn't hit the same for everybody. But if you know what it feels like to want to give up, if you know what it feels like to want to quit and to throw in the towel, you know what it feels like to start something but don't feel like you've got the strength to finish it, you want to let go, that, that hits a little different. If, if you know what it's like um, to feel like you're depressed and the weight of the world is on your shoulder and you can't do all you want to do, be all you want to be, go all you want to go. You don't have the resources and, and you just ready to end it all, but he kept you. Yeah. When the devil grabbed you and had you under his thumb, but, but God rescued you and snatched you out of the pit, the song hits a little different when it says he kept me. I remember Barbara Houston, Brother Drumbo, this was her favorite song because she knew what it was like to have cancer diagnosis and still have to find the strength to put one foot in front of the other. And so she loved this song, He Kept Me. And so I want to say, He kept me good. Come on, lift it, Zion. Have you ever been there with God? Nobody but Jesus, he kept me. Yeah. God kept me. Come on, where are all my strong folk? The strong folk in the room that, that go through and don't nobody come check on you. You, you the strong friend. You, you go through and don't nobody see about you. And, you can declare nobody but Jesus kept me through this. I had to cry my tears in the shower. I had to cry my tears in the bed when nobody else could see them because I was busy trying to keep everybody else and God was busy keeping me. He kept, he kept me, he kept me. He kept my mind, he, he kept my heart, he, he kept my health, he, he kept my body so I wouldn't let go. Come on, lift it, Zion. He kept me. When my loved one died, I wanted to go with him, but he kept me. Woo! Yeah. So I wouldn't let go. So I wouldn't let go. You think you heal for yourself, but he kept you so I wouldn't let What if he kept you so that somebody else wouldn't let go? So I wouldn't. So I wouldn't. Some of us so stuck on ourselves that we think it's about us, but what if he kept you so that I wouldn't let go? What if he kept you as a testimony to encourage me to keep holding on so I wouldn't? I wanted to give up, I wanted to throw in the towel, I wanted to take the pills, I wanted to grab the gun, I wanted to jump off the bridge, but I... Some of us can't be real about it. Some of us can't be real about it, but everybody ain't wanted to be here every single day. And you can declare from out of your belly that it was nobody but Jesus that kept you from being laid out in the front of somebody's church because he kept you. I'm going to let it go last time. He kept me. He kept me. God kept me. I know you want to take the credit, but he kept me. God, 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 God. He kept me. God kept me. Last time, he kept me. All over the building one time, so I wouldn't. So I wouldn't let go. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For keeping me. Ooh, Father. Father, we thank you.
We thank you for your keeping power. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your ability to cover us when we should be exposed. We thank you for your keeping power to keep us employed, to keep us up out of jail, to keep us out of the sick room. Who you keep us? We thank you for the keeping power of our students that are heading back to campuses last week and this week. Only by your power can you keep them safe from dangers seen and unseen. Father, would you keep our children on college campuses? Would you keep them in elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools? Keep them, God, when we can't keep them. And we'll continue to hold on to our faith. God, now it's time for the preaching and the teaching of your word. And it's our collective prayer, oh God, that you would simply speak to us because we are listening to you. God, you know the frailty of my flesh, and I pray that you would gather the scattered fragments of my strength now. Breathe upon me, dear God. Would you please use me as an instrument in your hand? Would you anoint me freshly, oh God, so that I can be clear in the explanation of your truth? Grace us, Father, with listening ears, receptive hearts, and responsive lives. Help us to leave here better than we came. That's our sincere prayer in Jesus' name. And we give you thanks for these things and all things. In the mighty matchless name of the majestic one who came that we might be made better. Name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said together all over the building, amen. Hallelujah. Give God a hand praise for keeping you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 This morning, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Zechariah. Book of Zechariah, there is an obscure passage of scripture found in the first chapter of Zechariah. You might need to go to your table of contents this morning. You might not often travel to Zechariah, but I believe the Lord has something to say to us in the book of Zechariah this morning, the first chapter, and I'll read verse eight. Man, will you, when you have it, why don't you stand on your feet as a sign that we're all in this thing together? Amen. Zechariah chapter one, verse eight. I'm going to read it from the NIV version this morning. And it says, during the night, I had a vision. And there before me was a man mounted on a red horse. He was standing among the myrtle trees in a ravine. Behind him were red, brown, and white horses. He was standing among the myrtle trees in a ravine. It doesn't make sense now, but for the moment that we have together, I want to tag this text where myrtle trees grow where myrtle trees grow. You may have your seats, amen. While Israel as a nation is under tough foreign reign in the second year of the Persian King Darius, Zechariah was trying to encourage and to uplift the nation being purged back into right relationship with a God who unapologetically demands righteousness and holiness. Zechariah, y'all, is trying to encourage Israel to work on the temple and to make their greatest effort and attempt to push themselves back into a place of spiritual obedience. Zechariah is using this rebuilding project to not only reconstruct the temple, but he is also engaged in this rebuilding project because he's trying to rebuild the nation's identity. Zechariah's prophetic content comes to him as he experiences eight visions, all released to him strangely on the same night, and, and these visions give to him revelation. He then discovers or delivers the messages shaped in a prophetic announcement to the people. The content of his prophetic pronouncements describe God's will for people that God has chosen in a season to distance God's self from because of the sins of his people. And the good news is, however, that when his people give themselves to spiritual repentance, God responds to their repentance by giving them the gift of restoration. Stay with me. The spiritual and prophetic voice given principal leadership, encouragement, and spiritual wisdom up until now has been the prophet Haggai. 
Haggai, however, has offered his last prophecy two months earlier. And essentially, Zechariah is the reserved prophet. And he comes fresh off the bench. And he's assigned to bring the next series of prophetic oracles from God to God's people. And the very first vision is given to him, not as a dream. This is not God speaking to him or giving him content to his subconscious as he sleeps. No, no. The prophet is wide awake, y'all. He's wide awake and it's at night and he's receiving these short bursts or short intervals of God sharing God's mind with him about the way God intends to restore and protect and advance his people. And the very first vision he sees, he gives to us in chapter one, verse eight. He says it's of a man riding on a red horse. That rider on that horse is interpreted to be the angel of Jehovah. He is the leader of a company of horsemen that are following him. Note at the outset of this message, the color of the lead horse is red. Red, red points to war and bloodshed. The rider we are told is seated upon his horse among myrtle trees. These myrtle trees are growing in the bottom of a valley. And it is clear that what this prophet is seeing is God surveying the earth to ensure that everything is right and safe since everything exists under his control and providence. And what the prophet witnesses when he sees this rider mounted upon this red horse is that God is giving his presence and his providence even in the valley. Somebody say in the valley. And that's what I want to anchor on this morning, that that this low place, this valley is not excluded from the protective power of God. That then suggests to us that as God intends to survey the mountain peaks and as God intends to survey the level land on which his people are going to attempt to rebuild their lives and reestablish their identities and recommit to their God, God also intends to survey the low places that they will for sure have to pass through at some stage. And here it is, God guards the valley too. What the other prophet sees, what he sees is simple to interpret that God is always going to fight against that which is fighting against God's people. I want to say that again, that God is always going to fight against that which is fighting against God's people. And God is then therefore releasing his compassion on a people that were suffering. Remember, remember, because he removed his head of protection from their lives. Why did he do it? Why did he do it? Here's why. Because he wanted to force his people to a place of repentance. Having now reached a place of repentance, God's response to his people uh, is to give them the gift of restoration. Now, I'm sure this text offers sermonic nuggets of instruction, and there is revelation and spiritual insight of this morning. Perhaps we wanted to just study these angels and horses, the color of the horses, the dialogue shared between God and God's people. However, I was arrested when I read the text devotionally and I saw what appears to be on the surface an incidental textual inclusion. You almost wonder why it's described and if there's a reason. What what, what possibly could be the spiritual reason? I was arrested by verse 8 when it says the prophet saw by night a man riding on a horse. He's leading a company of horsemen and all of the horses gallop stop among myrtle trees growing in the hollow. NIV says myrtle trees in the ravine. Amplified version says myrtle trees in the low valley. I couldn't help but to take note of how interesting it is that the prophet is invited by virtue of accepting his prophetic call to stand with permission to glance into the mind and into the will of God expressed to him in eight visions. He casts a glance around the environment of the rider and the horse and notice that the only extra commentary he adds to the description of the rider and the horse is that they are seen amongst myrtle trees. Is anybody listening this morning? No no mention of the color or cloudiness of any water flowing anywhere in the valley. 
no mention of the severity of shade or the absence of sun, no mention of any fowl or fish or birds or greenery, no mention of the height of the walls in the valley, no mention of any caves or openings or peculiar crevices in the walls of the valley. I'll say it again, the only thing mentioned is that this angel is on a red horse leading a company of horsemen mounted upon their horses and their gallops stopped among myrtle trees. When I read this, when I read this, I just knew that God was trying to add this to the revelation. I, I just knew it. I, I didn't consult any commentaries and I didn't consult any scholars. No, because I just answered from a first glance reading of the text that myrtle trees are not supposed to grow in valley. <laughs> I made the assumption and I got excited about it because I was prepared to jump on my sermonic soapbox so that I can stand and declare that God expects God's people to grow in unexpected places. It, it would make for a great sermon, y'all, and I was ready and I could ride that thing for a while. I'm, I'm talking about places where you're not supposed to thrive and things that we go through and we're not supposed to get anything positive out of that, that God expects us to grow despite adverse circumstances, despite severe struggles, despite unrelenting pressures. He expects us to mature in faith and expand in vision and to be strong regarding our spiritual resolve. I was ready, y'all, to blast that thing uh, and blow my trumpet and hop on my sermonic uh, soapbox and blow my sermonic trumpet and declare that God expects us to grow in unexpected places. However, comma, Jabari, however, comma, what I discovered is that myrtle trees actually love existing in these low places. It surprised me, maybe, maybe my, my myrtle trees thrive in low valleys. In fact, something about the valley feeds the myrtle where that same valley would kill some other tree. It's quite interesting. At one point in the context of the text, these trees were in great abundance on the apex of the Mount of Olives. And, and the only reason we know that is because the returning captives celebrated their first feast of tabernacles there. And they make mention of how in abundance these myrtle trees are on the apex of the mountain. But at the time of this text, myrtle trees have all but disappeared on the apex of the mountain, but are still in great abundance in the shaded darkness of the valley, stay with me here, I'm going somewhere. Because in my estimation, this invites us to then consider new ways of thinking about how we exist in life's low places. And maybe I ought to tell you that every one of us in this room will be called to do duty in life's low places. There is no place in the spirit that exempts you from having every now and then to make pilgrimage through life's valleys. Come on, talk to me here. These valley places have perhaps what cannot be found on a lofty mountain peaks. And could it be that many of us are missing opportunities to thrive and to flourish because we grossly misdefine, we, we fight to avoid, or we fail to properly interpret the low places where we must all be occasionally and all must offer duty and show up for ministry. And if you follow the text, if you follow the text, low places can become preferred places when you know that God puts transformation in some of your low places. I, I want to suggest, I want to suggest that you can get some things on the mountain that you can get in the valley. And, and, and some of you won't admit it. So I'll talk about my own life because I'm amazed at the different definitions I have of myself, depending upon the place I find myself in life. M me meaning this, if, if we just hung out of, at a restaurant, you would leave after about an hour or so and you would say that Shamara, she's nice. She's, she's a nice girl. I love talking to her. I like being around her. She's lively. She's full of passion. She's got energy. And for the most part, she's positive. She laughs at a good joke. She doesn't think that it's partly cloudy. She, she will then side on the part of the positive and she would probably say it's partly sunny when I'm on the mountain. But when I'm going through the valley, you, you don't want to hang out with Shamara too much. You don't want to hang out with me. And the reason you don't want to hang out with me is because I probably don't want to hang out with you either. 
Because when I'm going through the valley, ain't nothing funny. I, I'm not trying to hang out. I, I don't want to hear any jokes. It ain't partly sunny. It's partly cloudy. Stay with me here. So maybe one of the reasons that God assigns me duty in the valley is because God doesn't want me to lie about my passion for him on the mountain unless the same passion can exist in the valley. Because the spirituality that God gives to you ought not be affected by the change of your context or the change of your location. Whatever you are on the mountain, you ought to consistently be the same thing while you're going through the valley. Come on, talk to me here. And if you can be portrayed as something different in the valley that you are not on the mountain, it must mean that you are more controlled and mastered by your environment than your relationship with God. Ouch. Y'all know people like that, don't you? And things are not going well around them. If their peripheral reality is not positive, it affects their spiritual reality. But if you can be portrayed as something different, it must be environmental. Or if, or if you can be portrayed as something different in the valley, then you are on the mountain and the difference has to do with relationships. Then it must mean that you are mastered more about the need for human approval and affirmation and acceptance rather than the intimacy you share with God. And let me go ahead and release the attention in the room. Here it is. Here it is. Whatever you are on the mountain, that ought to sustain you while you're walking through the valley. <laughs> Nudge your name and tell them whatever you are on the mountain, be the same thing in the valley. Listen, I know, I, I never, I never know how many of y'all are going to show up for church, but it doesn't matter because one time I preached for what I thought was a woman's day engagement at First Not Away Baptist Church in Crew, Virginia. And when I hit there, when I got there, they marched me through the sanctuary. They marched me through the fellowship hall. They marched me downstairs into the kitchen area where about seven old ladies were celebrating the kitchen committee anniversary. And God in that moment had to teach me that if you can preach to that, then preaching to y'all would be nothing at all. Is there anybody in the building that knows that God has a way of training you to do time in the valley? Come on and say yes. So God invites us today to be like myrtle trees. I, 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 I'll admit, I'll admit, <laughs> maybe not preferring life in the low place, but certainly not afraid of life in the low place. Now, maybe what I should have told you is that myrtle trees for this prophet was symbolic. When his heart heard him describe myrtle trees, they knew God was trying to say something because they understood myrtle trees to symbolize the transformation of desert places into well-watered places. Now, 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 you have to get this because remember what Zachariah sees is a rider on a red horse. The color red was symbolic of war and bloodshed, and they are just coming out of a season where God has removed the hedge of protection. So the appropriate interpretation would have been that God is coming to get us war and bloodshed. The prophet doesn't want them to think that God is coming against them. He wants them to sense that God is coming to grab them. And so he says to them uh, as a clue that the rider upon the horse symbolizing war and bloodshed may give you the kind of discernment that God is going to take you out. But I don't want you to think that uh, because you're fear of the process. And so let me tell you this. I saw them uh, among myrtle trees. And what they discern from that is that God is not coming to take us out. God is coming to complete the process of transformation, which means that sometimes when God assigns you to the valley, it is not a punishment for having been irresponsible for what he has made you a steward of. But sometimes your assignment to the valley is God's way of saying that you have just entered a season of transformation. If you didn't catch it, let me say it to you this way. Bishop Augustine of Hippo said, the greater the joy, the greater is the pain. Ah, greater the joy, the greater is the pain, which precedes it, my God, which, which means sometimes pain is a prelude to what God intends to send after it. 
let me help you with it. Let, let's say we transform this room into a theater and we invite your favorite gospel artists and, and we sell VIP tickets and the front row is only for VIP tickets and we make them a, a skyrocketed price and everybody else pays based upon where they sit in the theater. Now, now you know when the headliner comes to the venue, they don't come out first. <laughs> Why, why, why don't they come out first here? It's because they are the main attraction. And so what they do, that they got to find some local talent and, and give them some exposure now. now. Now, it don't mean that your favorite artist isn't in the building. It's just they're in the back sipping on some water, getting their hair and makeup done, chilling, eating fruit, uh, talking to their kids. They could come out and sing, but the reason they don't is because the crowd has to be primed for the main attraction. Now, the problem with some of these prelude acts is that some of the local talent needs exposure, but not that much exposure <laughs> uh, because their gift or talent is not at a level where they should be in front of this kind of crowd. But if you're in a VIP section uh, and the prelude comes that doesn't usher you into the presence of God, you, you don't take your VIP ticket out of the ticket counter and demand your money back, do you? No, you don't. You, you don't do it. Why? Because uh, you recognize that there's nothing more than the front act. You, you recognize that it's not time to throw the experiences away uh, because something is coming. And so you encourage somebody next to you and, and, and say, this don't sound like we want to, but, but hold on, keep on listening. Uh, don't get mad. Don't move out of your seat. Don't go anywhere. Don't beg for a refund because if you can just hang in there and if you can endure for just a little while longer, after we get through these preludes, the main attraction is going to come to the stage. And trust me, the price you paid will be worth it. Come here for a second. Come on in for a second. You, you know why many of us can't get to the next level in the kingdom of God? It's because you keep walking out based on the prelude of pain. And God sent me to tell somebody this morning, don't walk out on the prelude of pain. Instead, you wait and be of good courage and let him strengthen your heart because it's all going to be worth it when the main attraction hits the stage and the Bible says for I reckon uh, that the suffering of the present time uh, is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Uh, have I got a witness up in here, up in here? That's all he's trying to tell us. That's all he's trying to tell us, which means the text is just trying to teach us a couple of things. I'll, I'll make quick mention of them and, and then we'll go ahead and get out of here. Here it is. Myrtle trees and this vision then allows us to accept the grace of God to grow everywhere. Mark it down. Myrtle trees allow us to accept the grace of God to grow everywhere. Now, remember, remember the obscurity of this place. Remember the lack of sunshine, the low elevation, all would make you think that it's almost oxymoronic to even connect these two words together, valley and flourishing. Doesn't even seem like the two of them should go together, but what I'm trying to teach is maybe we should change how we view life and how we view our potential and our possibilities when it's our season to do duty in the valley, because the text argues that God places himself in the valley and makes you capable of doing what you cannot do anywhere else. This is where there is an attack against the 21st century, 21st contemporary pulpit for over saturation of a gospel with no struggle. And a gospel that always bends towards resolution. If you study the New Testament, isn't it interesting uh, that God allows some tensions to remain? And why does he allow some tensions in the text to remain? Here it is. Because people in the church have to live managing tension. And when all preachers do is give them their weekend placebo, come on, it's going to be all right. Stand up, run, shout, spin around three times, sow a seed, go home and say a couple of sayings, and, 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 and God will miraculously turn everything around. In fact, in 30 days, I declare, says the spirit of God, uh, that things are going to change. Uh, car, you're going to drive. New boo would be in the back of the church right after the benediction. Y'all know how they preach. Uh, glory to God, uh, the man of God, uh, the people of God. Uh, and the problem is, with as many people that are in the sanctuary, it can't be everybody's season. And, and what we preachers are going to have to answer for when we stand before God is, how did you miss 
that while one prodigal son returns home, uh, another I leave in the text with the tension of him still sitting uh, outside. And why do I leave that tension? Why do I leave that tension? Because people in the church uh, are living with some tension. Uh, they will die still trying to manage. G.K. Chesterton is one of his works, the, the hammer of God. Hammer of God changes our whole perspective about how we should see life in the valley. And he says, one sees great things from the valley and only small things from the mountain peak. Now, why would he say this? Sometimes I'm flying in and out of Boston or New York. I used to fly out all the time for work and I would love to see the big cities at night and the shining lights. And, and when I'm up 20,000 feet about to make descent down into the airport, everything uh, looks small. When I'm rushing through downtown in my car trying to get to an important meeting and I get twisted and some of those downtown one-way streets, everything in downtown looks big. So, so you have to ask yourself, why would God assign you to the valley? Here's why. Because you've been minimizing his presence from the mountain. You, you can't shout over his blessings. You, you come to church and treat church like it's a routine. Or, uh, and, and he says, oh, you want to minimize my presence and my blessing. I'll tell you how I'll get you back to maximization. Uh, I'll put you in the valley. Because from the valley, everything looks big. You ought to testify everything he does is big in my life. Every door he opens is big in my life. Every way he makes is big in my life. Here it is. Here it is. Those myrtles, this prophet sees challenges around us. One, one, one final issue, and that's this, to grow where you are. Can, can, can you just grow where you are? That, that, that's what the myrtles teach us, to, to grow where we are. Can you grow where you are? I know everybody's looking for the next big whatever. I know everybody's looking for the next big move, but, but can you just grow where you are? Because myrtle trees are in valleys too. So if moving is in God's plan for you, God bless you, make the move. But if this season is not your season for elevation, you can still offer God maturation in the place where you are. Can I say that again? Somebody needs to jot it down that even if this isn't your season of elevation, you can still offer God maturation in the place where you are. Come on, nudge somebody and tell them grow where you are. <laughs> grow where you are. Stop being so consumed with making a move and learn to grow where you are because God can plant greatness in low places. Billy Graham, Billy Graham said this. He said, mountaintops are for nothing more than views and inspiration. He says, but fruit is grown in the valley. That, that great poet Jane Eggleston wrote this poem. Sometimes she says, life seems hard to bear, full of sorrow, trouble, and woe. It's then I have to remember that it's in the valleys that I grow. If I always stayed on the mountaintop and never experienced pain, I would never appreciate God's love and would be living in vain. She says, I have so much to learn and my growth is so very slow. Sometimes I need the mountaintops, but it's in the valleys I grow. I do not always understand why things happen as they do, but I am sure, very sure of one thing, my Lord will see me through. My little valleys are nothing when I picture Christ on the cross. He went through the valley of death. His victory was Satan's loss. Forgive me, Lord, for complaining when I'm feeling so very low. Just give me a gentle reminder that it's in the valleys I grow. Continue to strengthen me, Lord, and use my life each day to share your love with others and help them find their way. And she closes her poem this way. She says, thank you for the valleys, Lord, for this one thing I know. The mountaintops are glorious, but it's in the valleys that I grow. And y'all, I wanted to close my little sermon right there. I wanted to close out with this poem, but we know that just won't do. So here it is. We saw the best example of a myrtle growing in the valley where if you go with me to a mountain, they put that myrtle on the apex of a mountain and planted him between two thieves. Oh, but on the mountain, he died. He died. And then Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus went and begged Pilate for the body. And what did they do? They planted, they didn't plant that myrtle tree on the mountain. They planted him in the crevice of a cave. 
And will somebody help me shout? But early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Come on and nudge somebody and tell them, you look like a myrtle tree this morning. And since you're a myrtle tree, then you ought to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And your job is to bring forth fruit in this season. Come on and give somebody a high five and tell them, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to grow right where I am. I'm going to thrive right Right where I am. I'm going to succeed where I am. I'm going to demonstrate anointing where I am. I'm going to be faithful and serve where I am. Because if I can be faithful over a few things, then one of these days God is going to make me ruler over many. Come on, talk to me here. So if I'm challenging you to grow, you ought to grow where you are. Which means if you can shout when you're driving a car, then you can shout if you're standing on the corner with the bus pass. <laughs> means that if you can shout when you've got a church suit on, uh, then you should be able to shout when you've got a sweatsuit on. Uh, if you can shout over filet mignon, uh, then you ought to be shout, able to shout if you eat steakums and noodles and noodles. Uh, come on, talk to me, somebody. <laughs> Grow where you are because God is good no, where, no matter where you are. Mountaintops are glorious, but it's in the valley that I grew and I got a sneaky suspicion that the worship I see in this morning, you, you didn't get your worship from the mountain. <laughs> Is there anybody in here that say, I didn't learn how to worship in the mountain. I didn't learn how to fall on my knees on the mountain, but it was when I found myself in the valley. I didn't learn how to praise him in the mountain. I didn't learn how to pray in the mountain, but this praise was birthed in a low place because God's been, God's been good to you. You can praise God right where you are. Can you put your hands together where you are? Can you lift up your voice and tell God, thank you, right where you are? Can you shout hallelujah right where you are? Mountaintops are glorious, but it's in the valley that I grow. Let's pray. God, would you forgive us for misinterpreting our valley seasons? Lord, we've been walking around mad and feeling less than and feeling like we've been unduly sentenced to these seemingly negative places. Yet, God, today we thank you for sharpening our focus. Thank you for helping us to understand that you've put purpose even in the low places. Choir used to sing that if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve it. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. So right now, God, we change our mindset and we give to you a better attitude. And we're, God, inspired to grow even in the valley. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. And we ask that you would keep us in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Our Lord, we pray. The people of God said together, amen. Come on, can you stand on your feet? Can you rest on your feet? We wanna open the doors of the church this morning. Perhaps you find yourself living in a valley. I don't believe you're here by accident on today. I don't believe you're tuning in online today by accident. You're in the right place at the right time to be reminded that God can still keep you when you're in the valley. If you're disconnected from God, if you don't have a church, this is your opportunity to tap in, to get connected, to walk with us as we follow Christ together. We believe that as a church, when we do life together, we look more like Jesus. So why don't you join us? If you need God's church, let me tell you, Jesus died for his church and he's coming back for his church. Why don't you come? Give us your hand, give God your heart. If you're online, type the word join in the text. Or you can text the church to 804 601 8569 and a member of our leadership team and our diaconate will be in contact with you this week if you're here man woman boy or girl don't be shy don't be afraid we've all been in the valley we've all had to make that walk come on you ought to know him get to know him get to know him man woman boy or girl right now today just come right now just come. Let's sing that verse again. There's nothing better. 
There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. Than knowing Jesus. He gets sweeter as the days go by. He gets sweeter as the days Hallelujah. You ought to know him. You ought to know. Oh, I'm, I'm begging you today. Get to know him. Get to know him. Get to know him. Right now, today, why don't you come? Come on. Today, just come. Come on, we're going to hit the chorus and take it out. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. This is our invitation right now. Today, just come. Just come. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your right. Look to the hills. And come on, yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right now, today. Just come. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we're transitioning to the next part of our service, we're going to have the ushers come really quickly. So we can take care of offering and then we'll slip into our communion service as the ushers are coming why don't you get your gift in your hand get your gift in your hand if you are watching us online today you can give to the ministry via cash app dollar sign gjcc rva you can give to the ministry via givelify by looking up greater joy community church or you can send in your offering to P.O. Box 2202, Richmond, Virginia, 23219. If you're in the building, grab your gift and we'll give our affirmation together. Lord, with a cheerful heart, I sow my seed. Today, I planted in good ground. I believe my needs are met and my family is blessed. And I'm expecting a supernatural harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for both the gift and the giver on today. We thank you, oh God, that you've been so good to us, that we have resources to give back unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God, we believe if we give you our little, you can turn it into much. And God, we don't just give it so that it can be stored away somewhere for us to look at resources when others have need but God we give it to you uh, that we might meet the needs of the nation meet the needs of those who are in our community meet the needs of those who are less fortunate God we want to be your hands we want to be your feet in the world so bless us indeed we give that great faith knowing that we will not suffer lack because we have given uh, but we will be blessed and kept because that is your word and promise for us thank you God hear our prayer Incline your ear to us. Grant us your peace in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen and amen. The ushers will come now.
on, let's sing the doxology together. Praise God. Amen. So we prepare our hearts and our minds to take part in the Lord's Supper. Bow in humble submission to the command of God that says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we pray before the meal so that we might settle our hearts to focus completely on Calvary's cross, the sacrifice that he made that we might be saved from our sin. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come now at the table, God, that we might sup with you. That we might be reminded of your sacrifice. God, it's the first time in the year that we've come as a family that we might gather and have this meal together. We come, oh God, doing so, telling you thank you. Thank you for loving us so much that you would wrap yourself in human flesh. That you would cross that nine-month sea, that you would be birthed through the womb of the virgin and come as our suffering Savior, Jesus the Christ. Thank you, oh God, that you would traverse some 33 years saving, healing, preaching, teaching, delivering, setting free, only to be strung up, to be tried in kangaroo courts, and to be considered treasonous and a blasphemer. We thank you, oh God, that you took those charges. Jesus took them for us. Not only was he falsely convicted, not only was he blamed for something that he did not do, but, oh God, we thank you that blood came streaming down. We thank you, oh God, that body was beaten and broken. And while gruesome and while painful, he did it for us. God, as we come down to sub, we ask that you would turn this bread and this wine, this cup, this fruit of the vine from its physical, from its practical sense and to its very spiritual sense. As we drink of the cup, we're reminded of the blood. As we eat of the wafer, that we're reminded of his broken body. And that we're reminded that we live because he lives. Hallelujah. Be with us now, O oh God, and bless us indeed is our prayer in Jesus' name. People of God said together, amen. Amen. If you need assistance with opening the cup, would you raise your hand? A deacon will come and serve you at this time. Amen. We see you. If you're at home, would you grab the elements in your home? Fruit of the vine, bread, cracker, crumb even, whatever you have. That we might be able to eat with one another together. Amen. Way back on Cal. 
y'all know it. Come on, lift it, Zion. Oh, the blood that gives me strength. From day, day to day. It will never. Yes, God. Come on, that second verse. It soothes. It soothes my doubts. My doubts. And comes. Comes my fears. Yes, God. And it dries. And it dries. That gives me strength. Hallelujah. From day. Yes, God. Today. It will never. Yes. It's power. Oh, if you're in the building or if you're in your home, you ought to declare it a reach out. Reach out. God, to the highest mountain, yes, and it flows to the lowest, to the lowest, oh yeah, oh yeah, yes, that gives me strength. church right here. Never lose its power. Yeah. Never lose its power. Last time. Oh. Never lose its power. So we prepare to sup with one another. We just talked about the valley. And I'm so glad that the one who died gave us a promise in Psalm 23, right around verse 
five or six. David declares, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because God is with me. And I'm so glad that though Christ bled and Christ suffered and Christ died, that that wasn't the end of the story. Three days later, he got up. 40 days after that, he ascended back into heaven to be seated on the throne to the right hand of the Father. And that he gives us a gift called the Holy Spirit that walks with us and talks with us and encourages us and strengthens us and uh, gives us wise counsel and uh, gives us peace and uh, even loves us enough to rebuke us when we're wrong. I'm glad that when I'm in the low places of life, I'm not by myself, but there's somebody walking alongside of me. That's why we remember the cross. That's why we remember the sacrifice. That's why we remember, because life is not full of just mountains. They're glorious, but it's in the valleys that we grow. Let's take this bread and eat together. Let's take this cup, be reminded of his blood shed for us and drink together. Amen. Amen. Will you stand all over the building as we prepare to leave one another, but not the presence of our God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. One minute uh, before you get the benediction. Due to some circumstances, we didn't give Pastor her Christmas gift. So now I'm presenting her her Christmas gift from the Diagonal and the church. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm floored. Thank you, church, for loving me. I was not expecting a Christmas gift, but amen. Somebody knows that it can be greater later. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, let's pray and leave this place. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you, oh God, for what our ears have heard. We thank you, dear Lord, for how our hearts have been renewed and strengthened. Thank you, oh God, for the word. And I pray, Father, that it was planted in the ground of fertile hearts on today. That, oh God, throughout the week and even throughout this season, perhaps somebody's in the low place this season. Throughout the entirety of that season, oh God, I pray that that word will continue to grow and mature even in their hearts and that you would get the glory from it. God, thank you for giving us the strength to make it here. We trust, oh God, that you will give us the strength to endure the challenges of the week, the pressures of the week, the joys, the ups, and the downs of the week to come. And we do so gladly and we do so recommitted to whatever attitude that we have on the mountain, remind us this week to stay there, to keep it, and to hold on to it, even in the valley. Hear our prayer, oh God. We thank you. I pray that the Lord will bless and keep you. That the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That the Lord our God will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you love and give you hope and give you joy in Jesus' name. And the people of God said together, amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Go in peace.